Hello everyone, back to you into today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week's 10 days, or today's second video, uh, which takes us around the 14th of uh, May. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ESM ensembles. They run to around a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That's going to take us pretty much to the beginning of uh, June. Uh, so I'll get on that for you very short. Just say that the May 2020 month head forecast has been uh, released. So that, of course, is your uh, month head look at the official gas weather forecast for May is forecasting. A rather more changeable month, particularly compared to April. Probably still a bit milder than average, but not as big as deviation as we had in uh, April. And just a little bit mixed at times. So have a look at the May forecast and uh, see what's going on uh, there. Tonight, we're going to have a quick look at the uh, Bank Holiday weekend. Of course, we've got uh, Bank Holiday Friday coming up on Friday for uh, the early May um, Bank Holiday. That would normally be on a Monday. This year, it's on a Friday to coincide with the 75th anniversary of VE Day on the 8th of uh, May. But, of course, all of the celebrations and commemorations that we're going to have for VE Day uh, uh, anniversary, 75th anniversary, have all had to be cancelled due to the coronavirus and the lockdown. But uh, we've still got the bank on it itself, so have a look at the weather for that. Um, this evening... Uh, now, before I do anything else, I'm just going to say a big thank you to our latest YouTube channel member. So, uh, hello, thank you very much, and a big shout out to uh, latest YouTube channel member John Stenson. John Stenson, thank you so much, John, for becoming our latest uh, channel member with YouTube. That is absolutely great. It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. If you'd like to become a Gaz Webby's YouTube channel member, all you need to do is come to the uh, Gaz Webby's YouTube homepage and click the Join button that you see just there. Uh, so click Join button. That takes you to another page where you will um, be able to see what benefits you get for becoming a channel member and and also, you will be able to uh, you'll be able to um, sign up uh, on that page. Uh, that join button is also with all of the videos as well on YouTube. Um, so uh, you can do it through through all of the video pages. Uh, a few people said they can't see the join button uh, when we're on mobile and tablet devices. Work around with that. Is up. There's a link in the description with the video uh, at uh, YouTube, and we're also linking to it from the homepage at gazwomens.com. The join page uh, you can get to. From the homepage at gals.com. So it's relatively easy to be able to um, be able to uh, get to the join page and to uh, sign up. Um, big big thank you to all of our uh, all of our um, YouTube channel members. We've been doing this for just over a couple of weeks now and has proved quite successful. So big thank you to all YouTube channel members. Of course, big thank you to all patrons and all. And a big thank you to all donors uh, as well. As I keep saying, we are in difficult financial times at the moment. All of us are in difficult financial times due to the coronavirus and the lockdown. Um, so it's very special, actually, what you're doing. I mean, it's special all the time, uh, all of the uh, all of the donations and that that we get. But particularly at this time, uh, when uh, when things are are, are so um, bad for everybody, uh, the way you're supporting uh, uh, Gasworthies and the way you're supporting Gasworthies through this crisis is really, really special. So uh, just a huge, huge thank you to all of you. Um, for doing that. And as I say, our promise to you is that we're going to keep recording, we're going to keep uploading, uh, we're going to keep doing the written posts at gazwebbies.com, we're going to keep live streaming, and we're going to keep going, we're going to keep bringing you the content that you uh, want to see and you are enjoying. That's my promise to you uh, through this crisis. So thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. And I appreciate it's very difficult times for everybody. So if you can't uh, afford to become a channel member or to give a donation, that's not a problem whatsoever. You are still very, very valued and important to us. I mean, just by watching the videos and subscribing to the YouTube channel, you are uh, you are supporting Gals Webbies by doing that. So just big, big thank to everybody within the entire Gals Webbies community. You're all absolutely 
absolutely uh, wonderful. Uh, we are trying to get the subscriptions uh, on YouTube up. We are at 6,560 subscribers at the moment. We would like to get this to 7,000 subscribers by the end of the summer. I don't think we'll be able to do that because subs are quite low at the moment. Typically, we will be picking up subscriptions now in anticipation of things like Glastonbury. We'll be getting a lot of new people subscribing to the channel, to the channel in anticipation of, uh, of Glastonbury updates and forecasts uh, getting going in June. But, of course, that's all off this year. So um, uh, it's amazing the knock-on effects that this coronavirus crisis is having uh, down the line uh, for everybody. But uh, if you haven't subscribed to uh, the channel yet, then please uh, click the subscription button. You can, uh, you can click the bell notification icon as well. You'll be notified when we release um, videos and when we're live streaming and uh, whatnot. So a uh, big, big thank you to all of you for subscribing and your ongoing support for Gas Weather Beats. Right, and of course, special thank you to our latest channel member, John Stenson. Big, big thank you, John, uh, for that. Right, let's get on. And we're going to start off with the uh, central England temperature. So the CET uh, provisional up to the 3rd, up to the 3rd of uh, May yesterday is sitting at 10.0. That's an anomaly of only 0.2 of a degree above average. So clearly the anomaly to average in April was 2.5 degrees above average. But for the first three days of May, we're virtually bang on average, just 0.2 of a degree uh, above average. So clearly we have lost that very warm anomaly that we had um, through April. I expect this will tick up a bit over the next day or so. We are going to have a warmer interlude around the middle part of the week, but then we're watching out for a real northerly plunge potentially into the weekend. More about that in a moment. Uh, so these are the uh, 500 millibar high tsunami flow charts for the next week to 10 days from the Penn State University. This takes us to around the 14th of May, so it's taking us towards the middle part of the month. We've got the ECMWF on the top and the GFS, which we'll have in a moment, is on the bottom. So 500 millibars is there in the actual high pressure, low pressure. I'll uh, be moved around by the jet stream running above. Red extrapolates to high pressure. And blue extrapolates to low pressure. So you can see that with the uh, ECM in the 7 to 10 day time frame, we've got an area of above average heights sitting out to our west, ridge of high pressure in the Atlantic then, and a trough of below average heights to the east. So that's the trough that could bring us a northerly plunge over the weekend. It might still be hanging around into the early to mid part of next week, just to our east. Jet stream is going to be going something a bit like that. Um, so, yes, we are on the periphery of a northerly. We're relatively settled because high pressure is out to our west. So we're not bringing low pressure in off the Atlantic. <coughs> Excuse me. We're not bringing low pressure in off the Atlantic. But uh, we are pretty cool there and certainly could be quite showery. And a couple of days before that, actually quite cold. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, GFS is very similar in the 7 to 10 day time frame. Again, quite a deep trough of low pressure over Scandinavia, a ridge of above average heights out in the Atlantic and heading up towards Greenland. Uh, so again, on the periphery of a northerly, we do get a bit of a northerly plunge uh, a couple of days before the... Um, before day 10, anyway, we're going to cut off low down over Spain uh, as well. So both bars are agreement. It's not particularly unsettled. It's not desperately wet, this, because uh, the Atlantic is blocked. But uh, it is quite cold, and uh, the jet stream doing something a bit like that does bring that cold air down from northern climes. The one thing I would say about this northerly, though, is that it only takes a slight adjustment for the high pressure to be around there, and then the northerly will pass... Um, quite uh, harmlessly to our east, not harmlessly for Scandinavia and Northern Europe, but for us, the, the uh, northerly will ha pass quite harmlessly to our east and northeast. So it's not guaranteed that we're going to get this northerly plunge at the weekend and into the early part of next week, but we do need to keep an eye because it's a, quite an unusually cold air mass that's plunging southwards. Um, at the weekend. And so if we do find ourselves caught up in it, it could have big impacts for growers uh, and, uh, and farmers. So we need to keep a close eye on what's going on with this northerly. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. Looking at Coventry today. So the red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Coventry. Quite close to average at the moment. 
Well, we're going to see the temperatures, uh, upper air temperatures and surface temperatures lifting up, actually, over the next couple of days. So as we get to the middle part of the week, I think it turns quite warm, really. Temperature could go into the uh, low 20s Celsius. But then watch out towards the end of the week and into the weekend. A real plunge in the temperature taking place, going down to below, just below, minus 5 Celsius at 850 HPA. And staying pretty cold then, really, for a few days through this second week of the month. Quite a bit colder than average for several days. Eventually, the uh, upper air temperatures do get themselves back to being closer to average. Um, but not much sign that we go back to the kind of warmth we've got coming up around the middle part of the week, actually. So a relatively cold interlude or period coming up uh, through the second week of May, if that's correct, lasting for a few days, actually. Precipitation-wise, we about to dry weather over the next few days. As it turns colder, it does begin to turn uh, more showery. That's not a particularly wet ensemble, but there will be showers involved. And if the air gets cold enough, the showers could actually be wintry over particularly high ground in the north. But you wouldn't necessarily rule out a few flakes even to lower ground across central and northern parts of the country. Very difficult to get snow down to low levels in the south at this time of year, of course. But um, as we saw on the 2nd of June 1975, very occasionally, uh, really odd things can happen. Because on the 2nd of June 1975, there was snow even down to lowland southern England. It's very unlikely we will see snow in the south uh, over the weekend and into next week. Very, very, very unlikely indeed. Um, most likely we'll just have rain showers. But can't totally discount the, the possibility that it could happen. Uh, and they're moving into more extended range into the second half of the month, perhaps getting a little bit more unsettled then as the temperatures begin to tick back up. It possibly starts to turn just a little bit more unsettled. Uh, temperature anomalies from the 4th through to the 12th of May, a little bit below average. These might trend colder over the coming few days, actually, because this does take into account a relatively warm couple of days that we've got coming up particularly on Wednesday and Thursday. So, um, yes, these charts, these anomaly charts, might trend a bit cold in the coming days. Precipitation anomalies mostly dry up an average, although it's a little bit more unsettled, perhaps, through some central parts of England. But on the whole, on the dry up an average side in the next week. Uh, so that's how the GFS looks for uh, Thursday. High pressure dominating weather on Thursday over to the east of the coach. We're drawing up quite warm air from uh, the south with that. As we go through to Friday, because it's bank holiday Friday, the 8th of May, we begin to see the high pressure weakening. Um, so showers could break out on Friday, and then into the weekend, we start to set up this high pressure to our northwest. So the high begins to get going around Iceland and possibly moving up towards Greenland. Low pressure is pun plunging through Scandinavia, and that does turn the wind into the north. It starts to turn the wind into the north, and northeast dragging that colder air in from the northern latitudes. However, with the GFS, we are kind of on the periphery of it, just about. So uh, this is Monday, 11th of May, and the ridge is already being sinked down across the country. So the trough bringing that cold air is more over Scandinavia. We do get a swipe of cold air from the north with the GFS, but I think it's rel not relatively short-lived, actually. On this particular GFS run, anyway, the high pressure is already starting to collapse in. But there's the upper air temperatures for Monday, the 11th May. It is an unusually cold air mass, though. Even this, with a minus 5 Celsius iceberg through the country, would certainly be enough to produce um, damaging night frost. That could be the main issue with this, actually, damaging night frost. But by Tuesday, the 12th of May, the region is back in over top of the country. We've cut off the northerly. Could still be cold nights, of course, but temperatures by day would be starting to... to, to um, warm up. And as we move up towards day 10, high pressure rain stays in control and temperatures begin to stage a recovery. In the more extended rain, gradually starts to try and turn more unsettled uh, from the west. So that's how long we get to the end of a GFS run, which gets us to the 20th of May today. And we are beginning to turn more unsettled then. Slow pressure starts to move across the Atlantic. Of course, that's a very long way out, two weeks away. The GM looks like that, so mainly dry and quite warm on Thursday. Temperature could reach 20 degrees down in the south on Thursday into Friday. Absolutely just beginning to wobble as pressure weakens, so showers could start to break out. And then into the weekend, we have a high pressure further north with the GM. The high pressure is more... Remember, the uh, GFS have a high pressure like Iceland and just south of Iceland. The GM has a high pressure Iceland to Greenland. 
That's proper northern blocking, and that causes more of a northerly plunge to start to head down into the UK with the GM later in the weekend. To start next week. There's your prayer temperatures for Saturday. Uh, for Sunday, I should say, 10th of May, midnight Saturday to Sunday, really. Uh, so, relatively mild still in the south, quite warm still in the south, but it is getting a lot colder than the north with minus five Celsius ice firm pushing through. And then a real swipe from the north for Monday the 11th. At this point, the GFS is already beginning to cut off that northerly. But the GM really does have us in a very long fetch normally. Follow the ice bars back and the air originates from up there and just plunges southwards. Um, so, uh, yeah, if we have a look at the upper air temperatures, then we see we've got the minus 5 Celsius iceberg pushing through the country. Minus 10 Celsius iceberg is heading in towards Northern Scotland. That is very, very unusual for the 11th of May. This would be a damaging uh, northerly if it came off. Still cold on Tuesday the 12th of May as well. So by this point, the GFS has completely cut off that northerly and is uh, stay, showing temperature stage recovery. The GM still has us in uh, the Norvely, so it's quite a long-lasting Norvely as well, early next week. Eventually, the GM does cut off the Norvely wind, and, uh, and temperature will start stage of recovery. That's how we look as we get to day 10, Thursday the 14th of May, we're back under high pressure, and the cold air has been shoved away to our North Sea. So, two or three really cold days with the GM for the time of year. And then by day 10, starting to uh, see the temperatures recover slightly. And then the ECM looks like that. Again, we've got the high pressure over the country on Thursday, being mainly dry and quite warm weather. Into Friday and Saturday, the atmosphere just begins to wobble. The high pressure breaks down, so showers break out on Friday and in sa into Saturday. And then that's uh, that's Sunday. So here comes the northerly uh, again. It's like a north to northeasterly wind that's pushing in to the country on um, Sunday. The high pressure not quite as far north with the ECM as the uh, GM has it, but it is getting itself right to the south of Greenland uh, at this point. There's the upper air temperature. It's actually bringing the minus 10 Celsius ice firm into Scotland. Very, very cold uh, upper air temperatures. Minus 10 Celsius ice firm making an appearance into Scotland on the 10th of May is really unusual, to say the least. Uh, then the high pressure just out to our west on Monday. Again, we're in this cold northerly wind on, <coughs> excuse me, on Monday. And the minus 5 Celsius ice firm again is uh, right way through the country. So obviously cold enough for showers to be wintry in the north and significant frost uh, frost risks are associated with this. Into the middle of next week, we begin to start drawing the air back in from off the Atlantic. Temperatures start stage of recovery. And through next week, we begin to warm up those upper air temperatures. So by day 10, Thursday, 14th of May, the, uh, the temperatures are recovering from that uh, northerly shock that we have on Sunday, Monday, and possibly Tuesday as well. Very, very interesting charts, these. These are the options on the table for day 10 from the ECM ensembles via the Icelandic Met Office, and there's lots of them getting us uh, to the... Um, Oh, no, that's not right, is it? That's 168 hours. So let's go to day 10. There's day 10. Actually, let's have a look at those. So these are the options that we've got for uh, a week's time. So this is when we've, we're in the, re the real northerly shot, if it comes off. This is for the 11th of May. So we have 11 members of the ECM ensembles that have the high pressure out to the northwest. They're sort of in the North Atlantic going up towards Greenland, the trough of low pressure extending in from the northeast that's a real northerly plunge uh with that one 10 have uh, have below pressure a little bit closer to us so again it's a proper northerly plunge this and it's a bit more unsettled too maybe the um risk of that shower some of them in the north could be a bit wintry uh with those 10 10 just here don't have that high pressure quite as far north they have it more like a mid-atlantic ridge just to the south of greenland Trough of low pressure is further away from us. That would be chilly, but that's a little bit more of an Atlantic influence. Would allow temperatures to hold up slightly. Uh, another 10, including the control and the operational run. Again, not quite as far north with that high pressure, although we are bringing the trough in from the, uh, from the northeast. So, again, quite cold with that. Um... But probably not as cold as this option just here. Seven with high pressure to the north of Scotland. 
truffle load pressure is a lot further away from us with that. So that's a different solution again. Probably bringing quite cold winds from the northeast, but relatively dry. And then three with high pressure out to west of Ireland, low pressure uh, sinking in from uh, the northeast. That's perhaps one of the more unsettled options and would be a bit on the cold side as well. So the exact um, position of high pressure is critical, of course. So how much of a northerly shot, how much of this cold trough we get in. Um, the high pressure got to go far enough north and west towards Greenland, really, to allow a real northerly plunge. So if, if you don't want those cold northerly winds, you'll be hoping that the high pressure sort of just sticks around quite close to the country and the northerly sort of passes away to uh, the east of us to some degree. Uh, and you'll see from those options that there is quite a bit of uncertainty still about this northerly. In 10 days time, which is the 14th of uh, April, we have 18 members of the East Ensembles with high pressure out to the west, low pressure to the east. So relatively settled with that um, and, uh, and uh, a little bit on the milder side as well because it's more of an Atlantic influence from the air mass. 17 with northern blocking around Greenland and a deep trough to our northeast. So they're still going to be quite cold even up to the middle of the month. And then 16 with high pressure over top of the country and sending the jet stream northwards. Temperature staging a recovery there becoming, uh, becoming milder, warmer and mostly dry. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got finally for this section. 19 members of the East Ensembles Ensembles uh, just here. This gets us to the 19th of May, by the way. 19 members of the East Ensembles Ensembles with high pressure towards our northeast. Our Scandinavian high gets going into the second half of May, bringing in easterly winds, which probably aren't overly cold. 16 with low pressure out to our northwest, and they're bringing in westerlies, they're more unsettled. And then 16 again, hinting at a mid Atlantic ridge going towards Greenland, trough of low pressure still to our northeast. They could still be bringing in some northerly winds. So, quite a few options there as we get towards two weeks out. Um, but perhaps still favouring relatively higher pressure, but the exact position is uh, what's going to be important. Finally, the CFSV2, so these are 500 mm heights broken down into weekly periods. The first weekly period will take us from the 4th to the 10th of May. The coming week has quite a lot of high pressure influences, really, across much of Western Europe, a reasonable amount of dry weather. Eventually, we could start pulling in cold winds from the north and from the northeast. Uh, week 2 is the 11th to the 17th of May, high pressure to the northeast, bringing winds sort of from an easterly direction. Uh, then uh, week three is the 18th to 24th of May. High pressure venue in the Norwegian Sea, bringing the wind from an east to northeast direction. Low pressure to our south could be starting to undercut and possibly bring, bring some rain into more southern parts of the country. However, high pressure takes over again in week four, so 25th to the 31st of May. Back comes the high pressure, more or less, back in you know, over top of the country. That brings probably quite a lot of dry and quite warm weather with it. CFS temperature anomalies in week one are warmer than average. That's the 4th to the 10th of May. Uh, week two also um, is warmer than average. So the CFS not seeing much of a northerly here. Uh, this is the 17th of May, still above average temperatures then. Uh, week three, again, is uh, warmer than average, particularly for the north. It's the 18th, 24th of May. And uh, then week, uh, week, that's week three, week four, 25th to 31st of May to the end of the month. Again, still largely warm and average for much of the north. And precipitation, finally, week one, 4th to 10th of May, drier than average. Week two, 11th, 17th of May, that one is also significantly uh, drier than average. Week three is the 18th, 24th of May. Big drive and average from the north, near normal elsewhere. Week four goes back to drive and average 25th to 31st May. So the CFS is going for a relatively warm and dry May, it has to be said. It has to be said. Uh, but uh, uh, not so much of a normally either. I think it's a normally we've got to focus on, though, for the weekend and early next week. If you don't want the northerly wind, and I will think a lot of people don't want northerly winds in the second week of May, bringing the air in from the Arctic. If you don't want it, then uh, you'll be hoping that this trough is uh, further to the northeast over Scandinavia, and uh, we don't take the high pressure up to Greenland. If we keep the high pressure like just to west of uh, west of Scotland and west of Ireland, then we should maintain somewhat of an Atlantic influence, which will allow the temperature to hold up. If you do want the northerly, you're going to want to see this high pressure scooting up to Greenland 
and allowing Matt Soft to plunge in uh, from Stan Day. And if he does, then watch out because it could be, it is an unusually cold air mass that's going to be associated with this trough. So if we find ourselves under it, we could certainly see some damaging night frost, if nothing else, over weekend and into start next week. And then beyond that, probably a recovery in temperature uh, as high pressure comes back in over top of the country, moving up to the middle part of the month. Right, that's it uh, for your week 10 video update. We'll be back later on uh, having a look at the uh, weather in detail for Bank Holiday Weekend on uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. That'll be this evening. That's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.